Hello YouTube and welcome back to the life of a virtual airline pilot. I'm your host Captain Mac and as you can see we still uh, even after our last flight our flight time still shows 15 hours 58 minutes with four hours or technically four hours and two minutes to go and that is because our pilot report or our pi rep has not been approved yet. And let's just hop in here and I'll show you. You can see it's still uh, approval is still pending. It could be because we flew a different aircraft than that which was uh, slated for the flight. It could be because we were delayed or it could be that it was randomly chosen to be verified by a hub manager. Either way, it doesn't really matter um, because when we look back over here, let's just hop back in. In case you're wondering, this is this is take two of this entire video here, and I'll explain why here in just a second. Uh, but you can see that our current location is Phoenix. That's where we know we flew to. That's where we want to fly out of. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to book that next flight. Now, you may recall before that I had flights going back to Sholo and back down to Phoenix. And you look here now and I've got a flight from Phoenix to Las Vegas and you might be saying, well, when did that happen? That was take one of this video. The idea here was I was going to actually try and do this flight in the Metro Liner. And let me tell you, wow, not just a nightmare, but serious issues. Uh, when I started the engines, they kept dying. I couldn't figure out why. So I went ahead, I just rolled with it, and I paused the video and then just restarted the video with the engines running. Everything was good to go. Um, you know, other than it wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't get to do the checklist the way I wanted to, but it was good to go, right? So we were, we were rolling. Everything was great. We did our takeoff. We start climbing out. I'm just about to turn on to uh, the, the, the heading I needed to get on course and head over to Las Vegas, and both engines died. Yeah, the pause there was just for you to take a moment and be like, what, really? So clearly I'm having some major issues with this Metroliner. And, you know, now let me just say, I don't think it's this, the sim. I don't think it's a problem with the sim. I think it's me. In other words, I just don't know that aircraft well enough. Now, there is a, a mission we're going to do, and I'll show you missions here eventually. There's, there's a mission we're going to do that's got a lot of flights in that Metroliner. We are going to do them eventually, so we're definitely going to spend some time in that aircraft. But I have decided that today just is not the day. So that being said, I left a flight up there so that I could show you what I talked about last time, and that's how to remove bids if you don't want to fly them. And it's actually really easy. You just click on all bids, and you can remove as many as you want. You can see right here it shows all the bids that you currently have. The little star says double click, that's for remove bid. So if I click once, it does nothing. If I double click it, there it goes, it's gone. Now we have no flights, of course, so let's go ahead and hop on over. And we're going to use the the easiest way for us to find a flight, unless, uh, unless we have something specific in mind, which we don't. So we're just going to click on Phoenix. That's where we're at, our current location. That's where we're going to depart from. And all we want is anything for a probationary first officer. This is going to bring up all the flights that are available for us. If we didn't click on that probationary first officer, it would show all departures out of Phoenix, and a lot of those would be in red and say would and they would say above your rank. We don't want that. We don't want anything that's SW4F because that's the Metro Liner, and I'm done. I'm not trying anything with that aircraft right now. It is not happening. So you know what that means. I'd love to fly the E120. That'd be fantastic, but nobody's made a really good one yet so until there's a good one out there I'm not flying the freeware stuff nothing against the guys who've made it because they do great work it just doesn't work for me so we're gonna fly either a beach light aircraft or beach 1900 which still limits us to where we can go we're kinda of bouncing around to the same places and that's unfortunate but that's just the way it's gonna have to be we can choose the beach one uh, 1900 and still fly the King Air 200 which is what we're gonna do so I'm gonna go ahead and take this flight up to uh, page again because we have a nice scenery up there you can see it's been added now and then I'm gonna go ahead and click start new flight search and I'm gonna grab my return flight right now and I can see I can choose to depart from current location or last destination in itinerary which is page we're gonna choose that we don't even need to choose category on this one because there's nothing that we can't fly going in and out of page at least as far as I know so we'll just click find flights and you can see there's only a few flights. We can go over to the Grand Canyon. 
Uh, I think we looked at doing that, but that's a Cessna light aircraft. Don't really want to do it. So all the rest of the flights are back to Phoenix. So let's grab that flight back to Phoenix for now. That bid is added. Now we can hop on over to our pilot center here or a profile page. And this is already, what, five minutes into this or whatever. So I'm just going to hop back over here really quick. And, uh, yeah, any, any stinking day. <laughs> My internet sucks. Okay, here we go. We're back over here now. There's our two bids in there. We're still waiting for that last pie rep to be approved. It's not a problem. We're going to go ahead and push forward with these flights. So let's hop on over to ACARS. Let's get everything fired up, and let's get this next flight going. See you in just a minute. Okay, let's take care of our A-cars here real quick. Go ahead and grab that next bid in our list. There it is, Great Lakes Airlines. We know we're not flying the Beach 1900, but we also know that we can substitute the King Air 200. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, we are going Phoenix to Page, and we are currently located in Phoenix, so that's good. That's where we want to depart from. This flight is scheduled for a little over an hour, so that's part of the reason I chose it. We also have... We do have a nice scenery up there in Page, but also we want to get this we want to get this wrapped up, right? We want to go ahead and move on to first officer and, and start looking at some new aircraft. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're ready to rock and roll just about on here. We want to go ahead and grab a route here. We could type in our own. We already know that. I could go GCN Cliff PGA, which is exactly what I'm flying. So there we go. That if I typed it in, that's exactly what I type in. So we're good. We're going to go on up to 23,000 feet here. We're getting close to the ceiling of this aircraft, I believe. I'm not 100% positive. I'll have to look at the stats on that. I think it might be, uh, I think maybe this 200 can go up to 30,000. Not positive. If you know, leave it down in the comments. Otherwise, leave me alone about it, I guess. <laughs> all right, uh, and that's pretty much it. So once we're over in the sim, we're all loaded up, ready to rock and roll. We'll press start flight. That will start tracking everything for our flight on ACARS, and we will get credit. So, that's that. Minute and a half, not too bad. Let's go ahead and hop on over there. Now, I know we were just over here on A cars, and you're probably thinking, why are we looking at this thing again? Um, somebody asked me in one of the comments uh, how to actually start the flight once you have everything set up, how to, how to get A cars to start recording your flight. And I thought I'd shown it before, but uh, not absolutely positive about that. So, I just thought I'd show you real quick. I've already got the aircraft loaded into the sim. The uh, parking brake is set and the engines are shut off. That is a must in order to start A cars. Once that's done, I hop back over here to A cars, take a real quick look, just make sure I've got everything set up the way I need it to be, which in this case it is. So if that's done, the parking brake set and the engines are off, all I need to do is click this button right here, start flight. It's going to tell me that I loaded a different aircraft. That's okay. We can acknowledge that. It says it's not parked at the gate. That's because we're using an add-on scenery. That's okay. I can acknowledge that. I am at the airport, so we're good to go on that. Sometimes when it says you're not parked at the gate, that'll flag it to be um, manually reviewed by your hub manager. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, they're pretty good about getting to it pretty fast, so it shouldn't be a problem there. So once I've acknowledged those, it says my flight phase is boarding and I'm good to go. So ACARS is now tracking my flight as far as ACARS is concerned we are in the process here <clears throat> excuse me so what that means is once I release the parking brake and you you all have probably seen it many times on the uh, top left corner of my screen uh, I'll get a message from a cars that says passenger boarding or passenger loading completed at that point if I were to hop back over here to a cars real quick uh, the flight phase would change to either holding or taxiing to runway and that means uh, ACARS is now tracking physically what we're doing, not just acknowledging that we are loaded now. So we're good to go once we click that Start Flight button, acknowledge any uh, anything that it tells us, and then we're off and running. So just wanted to show that real quick. Let's go ahead and hop on over into the sim now, and let's get this flight going. Well, welcome back to Phoenix Sky Harbor, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know that I said we were going to fly that King Air 200 on this flight, but after getting everything set up I thought you know what we haven't flown this uh, 350 but maybe once or twice and boy this is a neat aircraft this is the Milvis King Air 350i and I wanted to put some time into this airplane again because uh, I still need to get to know it which means we're gonna probably have some stumbling and bumbling along the way like we did last time I flew it and that's okay because 
it's a flight simulator. We don't have to be perfect on every run because nobody's life is really at stake. In the real world, of course, you would have to know this aircraft inside and out, upside down, backwards, you name it. You'd have to know every little detail about it before they're going to let you fly passengers in it. We know uh, quite a bit about it already. We also know that there are a lot of similarities to the King Air 200. That's not to say it is the same aircraft because it certainly is not. It's got different engines. It's a different size. There's all kinds of differences. But many of the procedures are very similar to the King Air 200, which is the reason that we're able to fly this aircraft even though we don't actually have the checklist and manual for it yet. And I, I've mentioned that in previous videos. The aircraft's not quite finished yet, so we don't have everything we need for this aircraft. But we do have some pretty good knowledge when it comes to the King Air series of aircraft, which is going to make it possible for us to fly this one today. Okay, I've yacked about that long enough. The point is, I love this airplane. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at this thing. Seriously, look at this thing. Yeah, we just needed a moment of silence there. So let's go ahead and hop on inside the aircraft and let's get started because we don't want to mess around too long here. Apparently, uh, there have been a couple of complaints about the length of my videos. Specifically, somebody uh, um, somebody did an article on Virtual Airlines on FlightSim.com. Wonderful article, loved it. It was fantastic, uh, and they they happened to highlight my videos on it, which I was you know absolutely honored that that was done. And somebody on there posted uh, as a comment to that something about, uh, oh, I took one look at the videos and they were like over an hour long and, and I just, there's no way I'm going to watch that. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to watch my videos. But interestingly enough, uh, you'll remember that a couple videos previous to this one, I actually was cutting them in half and I got a comment. I, as always, I asked for your comments. Tell me what works for you guys. And somebody actually said that they prefer the longer videos. So I'm going to stick with that for now because I'm not getting anything else from anybody else. So um, <laughs> that being said, I, I don't want to drag it out too long. And I do tend to talk a lot, don't I? And uh, I'm sort of rambling on now because it's been a few days since I got to do a video. And I'm actually really excited. So I want to jump in this aircraft and get started. And that means I need to stop just running my mouth and start doing checklists, right? So let's go ahead and get started on that. And we're going to start with our elevator trim as we always do. And it says to set it to zero. It is at zero right now. And as I always do, I'm going to rotate it up just a little bit. And that's a practice I learned in the real world because I'm prepping for takeoff. And guess what? I'm going to need trim up for takeoff. So I do it right away. Cabin doors are locked. Baggage is loaded and secure. Weight and center gravity is checked. Brakes are set. All switches are off with the exception of the beacon switch. The rotating beacon switch is supposed to be on so that as soon as I put power onto the aircraft, I have a rotating beacon. Uh, landing gear switch handle is down. That's this one right here, and it is. Power levers are to idle. That's these right here. They are in idle position. Prop, uh, yep. See, you guys know I have a hard time talking. Uh, propeller controls are supposed to be full forward, and that's those guys right there, and they are now full forward. And what else? Condition levers need to be in fuel cutoff. They are. Cabin signs need to be on fasten seat belts and no smoking. And if you remember in the 200, they're down on the right, uh, on the first officer's panel. However, in this aircraft, they are up here on the overhead panel. So all the way up, that's no smoking and fasten seat belts. So we're good to go on that. And now we can hop on down to that first officer's panel here. And we can make sure that our cabin temp mode is set to off. And it's a little different in this aircraft. If you look, the layout here is a little bit different. So we want to make sure our cabin temperature mode is set to off. We can see this is our mode here. We'll turn that off. Vent blowers need to be on auto. Blower, blower, those are on auto. Aft blowers off. Uh, I don't see a switch for aft blowers. Uh, this is cockpit and cabin. Maybe that's what it's talking about, but there's no off selection, so we're going to stick with what we got there. Electric heat needs to be off. I don't see a switch for that as well. Um, well, here's electric heat right here, but it's within the mode, the environmental mode control. So, oxygen supply pressure check. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way here. That's this right here, and we can see that we've got plenty of pressure in our oxygen uh, tanks there. The oxygen supply control handle is supposed to be uh, pulled on, and in the 200, there's a couple of handles right here. I made the assumption that one of those is the correct handle. There's nothing in here, and I haven't heard anything from anybody on whether or not they know where to locate that at. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it as is. Hopping on over to the captain's side here and taking a look at our fuel. The uh, fuel firewall valves need to be closed. Now that's that's the King Air 200 here in the King Air 350. You may remember that they are simply 
link directly to the uh, to the fuses here and the fuses aren't simulated lots of pretty colors they look fantastic they did a beautiful job uh, as far as the uh, texture goes here but they're not actually simulated I can't do anything with those standby pumps need to come on and in, uh, in the 200 we listen for operation but here in the 350 uh, I don't hear anything now after you turn the battery on sometimes uh, I will hear after a couple minutes you start to hear something but that's a long time to wait but the next step is for us to switch our batteries on anyway and our fuel pressure enunciator should actually be off in this case okay that's the oil pressure there I know it's a little hard to read on the video it says left and right oil pressure are low but our fuel pressure uh, indicators are not on now if we turn off our standby pumps one and two and you can kinda hear them spinning up there actually no you know what that's not the pump spinning up uh, there's our left and right fuel pressure is low and that's what it's supposed to do when we turn those fuel pumps off what you hear spinning up is actually uh, probably the gyros but I could be wrong about that as well I'm not that familiar with this aircraft I do know that when you turn the power on a Cessna 172 you start to hear that same sound and that's actually your gyros spinning up so just something to keep in mind standby pumps are off at this point um, cross feed we could check the cross feed but it doesn't actually make a change in this aircraft like it does in the 200 so we're not going to bother with that auxiliary transfer switches this one and this one both need to be on auto and then there's there is no no transfer light to test on this one so we're good on that as well we want to check our quantity in both the main and auxiliary tanks and I've got it right around uh, 1300 pounds total 650 per tank uh, in the main tanks and we have nothing in the auxiliary so we're good to go on that all right enough talky talk there right uh, what's next here DC volt and load meters we've done this a few times in this aircraft at there's nothing for me to do to check those I, I, there's no buttons to push like there is on uh, on the uh, King Air 200 one thing I did forget though is that the uh, instrument emergency lights do work in this aircraft so we'll flip those on right now they do provide a little extra light make it a little easier to see even though it is the middle of the day hopping back over here to the first officer side and we need to test our stall warning and that's the ugly guy here. Oop, wrong way. And then there's also a landing gear warning. Both are plenty obnoxious. And there's an overspeed warning, which does nothing. Good times. <laughs> Those tests are annoying, and that means they're working. Don't know how to test the fire, uh, the fire detectors and extinguishers. I know we've got the switches here, but it doesn't actually light up anything on the uh, on the panels here. So on the enunciator panels here. We do, however, need to go ahead and test the enunciator lights. And we do that. I have to actually zoom out to do this because we want to test them all at once. So it's all of these lights here and all of these lights here. And we press this button to test them. Everything lights up as it should, so we're good on all of that. And what else here? Database has been reviewed. It is valid. Rotating beacon switch is on at this point because I had it on to start with. That little scraping sound is my clipboard, which means we can do what? That's right, you guessed it. We can roll right into the engine start procedure. So the engine start procedure for this aircraft is the same as it is for the King Air 200. And what that means is, let's hop over here to a view that we can see really well. We're going to flip on the engine ignition and start switch for the right engine over here. We're going to wait for our, um, excuse me while I try to think here, we're going to wait for our N1, which is up here, to spin up to 12% or higher, and then we're going to move that right condition lever to low idle. That's going to fire the engine. As soon as our N1 goes past 50%, we're going to turn that switch off. The engine ignition and start switch will come off. And then we'll monitor our engine temperature, we'll monitor our torque, as well as our oil pressure and oil temperature, which are all over here, and I'll show those to you in a moment. And once all that's done, the uh, engine will go to high idle, generator comes on, once we've got a charge it goes back off and then we do the same procedure for, oh I had a little hiccup there, <laughs> then we do the same procedure for the left engine. Any questions? I didn't think so. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. The right engine ignition and start switch comes all the way on. We're watching right here, 7, 8, waiting for N1 of 12 or higher and uh, last time I tried this I accidentally grabbed them both at the same time so we just want to make sure we get just the right engine move it to low idle and the engine fires up 
Oh, there's that lovely sound. Absolutely love it. Keeping an eye on our engine temperature here. Let me jump down here so that you can see a little bit better. This is our engine temperature right here. Okay, this is our N1 right here. This is our torque. And then for the right engine, our fuel pressure is right here. I'm sorry, not our fuel pressure, our oil pressure is right here and our oil temperature is right here and all of those are in the green and normal so what we can do now is we can hop back down here and turn that generator on. Generator is on, it doesn't uh, do the reset function that we have in the King Air uh, 200 so we just flip it to on and then we take a look up here and we can see on the right engine that we now have a DC load. All right, So we're good to go on that. Uh, Let's see, this is our battery voltage here, TPL, I don't actually understand what all of these are, but there's the right generator, and you can see that the right generator is pushing out plenty of juice there. So if I go back over to the battery, there's the battery, but with the right generator on, now we're getting a lot more. So we're good to go on that, which means we can go ahead and move that condition lever to high idle. You'll hear the engine spin up a little higher. That's fantastic. We can turn that generator off and roll and we did turn that off, right? Yep. Yeah, we did. The, it's actually got two two functions. It goes down twice. Not really sure why that is. I'm going to leave it in the middle and let's go ahead and do the left engine now. Left engine ignition and start switch is turned on. We're watching our N1. It is right here. Looking for 12%. There's 10 right there. Might be a little hard to see on the video, but I can see it pretty good here. And there's 12%, so we can move this to low idle. You'll see that's, that fired up the engine over there. As soon as we get past 50%, which it's already well past it, we can go ahead and turn that off as well. Both of those are off at this point, and then again, we're simply monitoring our N1 as well as our engine temperature, which is over here now. It's right underneath here, but on this side, it's way over here. Our torque is, uh, maybe that's a torque percentage, I don't know. This is the props here. This is the RPMs. I was incorrect about that. Here's your torque, torque, RPMs, okay? Hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, I'm trying to talk just loud enough without yelling in your ear. Same thing, uh, oil pressure here and oil temperature here. And basically everything's good to go. The oil temperature is a little lower. Uh, it's going to take a minute to catch up, but that's all right. At this point, what we can do is hop back down here and we can flip on both of our generators at this point. Close that cover. And now, and I wrote this in here finally, we need to turn on the engine anti-ice switches. And you can hear that brings the RPMs down quite a bit. And the reason is for all ground operations, we're supposed to have those engine anti-ice switches on. So that's done. Our engine start is complete at this point. We can go ahead and move uh, the right condition lever to low idle. So we'll bring that down here and try and even it out a little bit. And let me just double check. So let me explain something about checklists real quick because you hear me go, hold on a sec, let me check. Here's, here's the way a checklist should work, okay? It's, uh, you probably have heard of the term flows before, so a lot of what you do on a checklist is actually a flow. The whole startup procedure, I didn't go down every step of the checklist while I was doing it. I've done that in the past to get very familiar with it, but once you're familiar with it, the idea is you go through the process, and then once you believe you're done, you go back to your checklist, and you go down one step at a time down the checklist and make sure that you've actually done everything you're supposed to do on there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going back down my checklist and making sure that I didn't miss anything. And it looks like we are good to go. So next of course would be the after start and before taxi checklist which go hand in hand with each other. And that starts out with a check on the DC volt and load meters. All right, uh, this is the DC percentage load. The load is very low on the aircraft. Right generator is pumping out juice. Left generator is pumping out juice. I don't know what the center is. We don't have any external power. So as far as I know, we're good on everything. Now, again, I don't have a proper manual for this, so I may be missing something. If you're a King Air 350 pilot and you know, that's for you, dispatch. You know who you are. Go ahead and give me a heads up here and let me know uh, what I'm missing so that I can get things right in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Avionics master switch needs to come on. That's right here, and you'll see all our fun stuff hopping on here. That's what we want. Lights are as required. We're going to have nav lights, recognition lights. Uh, we don't have anybody standing in front of us. We can flip the taxi lights on now, strobe lights, and beacon lights were already on as they should be. 
cabin temperature and mode needs to be as required. Very simple, I stick it on auto and now it's as required. Instruments are checked, brakes will be checked as we start to taxi out, which means all we need to do is uh, taxi out to the runway now and we will be good to go. So with that, as always, I'm gonna do my last minute checks, make sure I haven't missed anything, and then I'm gonna hop back on here with you guys and we will kick this thing off. So I'll see you in just a second. Now I know you're probably wondering why we're staring at this blank screen here. Um, part of my last minute checks, I wanted to show this to you because I, I, it's not, since I don't have a checklist, I, I keep forgetting to do this during the startup procedure um, or the before taxi really, but whatever. Uh, we need to turn on, we have an FMS in this and we're going to fly with it today as best we can. So we need, to, we need to get this thing initiated. It doesn't take very long in this aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here on screen real quick. The on off button is right here. So I'm going to click that on. You'll see it's firing up right now. It's going through its own uh, its own checks, making sure everything's working properly. All rights apparently are reserved. <laughs> it's going to give us some information on our current position and uh, the date as well, which uh, is correct on this aircraft, in case you're wondering, as well as when the NAV database expires. This is how we know that our NAV database is still uh, accurate. So we're going to go on that. We can accept this. And then there's nothing in here except our current location. Well, I've gone ahead and I put the route into FSX. That's where it comes from. <coughs> so we're going to go in here, and we don't see the route on here. We're going KPHX to KPGA, right? There it is right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, I had to clear my throat there. Anyway, so what we want to do is put the number over here. So it's number one. For those of you who are familiar with the uh, FMS in the Dash 8Q400, you'll be familiar with this style of uh, entering information. So we're going to choose route number one, and we're going to hit enter, and it populates that route for us. So if we hop up here now and we take a look at our map, you can see that the route is now in the map there, and we will be flying via the FMS. All right, so we're going to go on all that. Everything else is ready to go, <coughs> and I'm still struggling with uh, being able to breathe here. Uh, another thing I always do in my last minute checks, this is a checklist item, but I do it here as well. I just take a quick look. Um, left and right bleed air are not on. We need to have those on. Left and right pedo heat are not on. We need to have those on. The auto feather is supposed to be off at the moment, and the rudder boost is supposed to be off at the moment as well. Rudder boost should be down here. Rudder boost will go on as part of our before takeoff checklist. So all of that being said, we should be good to go at this point. We are going to be taking runway 25 right. Uh, it's always amusing to me that default uh, FSX ATC does not seem to understand which runways are the proper ones to use because uh, 25 right should be our runway for today, but it seems like everybody's getting ready to take off on 7 left. So we may have some traffic coming at us, but the weather indicates that 25 right is the proper direction. So uh, that's what we're going to fly. Let's go ahead and taxi out and get this show on the road. Just for your information, I will be using Track IR today. There it is, just turned it on. Uh, sometimes I struggle with it a little bit. Um, maybe it's not, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I have a few issues with this thing. That's why uh, the, uh, the whole view seems to get slung around like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. I'm trying to turn this on, but it doesn't want to work. Uh, again, yeah, there's still some things I don't know about this aircraft, so my apologies. In case you're wondering, the uh, master caution light is supposed to be on right now, and that's because we don't have the auto feather turned on. So let's look down here. Enough talky talk. Let's take the brakes off, and we are good to go. We can move our engines to high idle, and that should actually help us with our taxiing out here. You hear the engines coming up a little bit. I haven't moved the throttles. That's the engines coming up from me moving them to high idle. So what I'm actually going to try and do, and I don't know if this is a proper way to do this or not. Uh, so, you know, bear with me, but uh, I'm going to actually try to use uh, the, the uh, beta mode as well as, um, you know, the high idle, uh, moving the high idle back and forth a little to help with taxi, if necessary. Only because it actually takes quite a while for these engines to uh, spin up and slow down. What I mean by that is with this turboprop, when you, uh, when you add throttle to your, uh, to your aircraft, to either one of the engines it doesn't it's not an instant response it's not like flying like if you've ever flown a Cessna even in the sim if you fly a Cessna you get an instant response to an increase in throttle all 
All right, sorry for the little quick jerk there. All right, so you, you get an instant response when you uh, when you add throttle to the aircraft. That's not the case with these turboprops, okay? With these turboprops, you don't get instantaneous reaction in your props. It takes a second. It takes them a little while to spool up, and it takes them a little while to spool down. And that's really important to remember that uh, during the landing and takeoff phase, especially during the landing phase, because you're trying to get your speed set just right and uh, as you pull back on those throttles they may not come back as quickly uh, the engines may not come back as quickly as you want them to and so you end up pulling them back further than you need to and if we pull those back further than we need to of course then what's going to happen when they do slow down we got to add that throttle back in but there's a delay with the throttle coming in as well see what i'm saying so so if the throttle takes a little while to come back in what happens we end up getting too slow we run the risk of stalling the aircraft Oh, in case anybody's wondering, I'm going to runway 7 left. All right, the wind did shift, so we're going to use runway 7 left. We're going to leave our flight plan as it is, and it may cause a couple of minor issues, but it's not going to be a major problem. So we're going to go ahead and just fly what we got here. Okay, so i got a couple more minutes of taxi here. I've kind of run my mouth about that a little bit. It is important for us to understand how our engines work. In other words, uh, you know, when I add throttle, it doesn't come in instantly. When I pull throttle back, it doesn't go away instantly. I need to understand those things. That's important, and you'll hear it as we as we go through our flight here. But I'm going to go ahead and break away for just a minute here. Uh, let me turn off this track IR before I go jerking my head all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to break away for just a minute here. I'll finish up the taxi, and I'll see you guys before ta or the uh, before takeoff checklist. And here we are, holding short of runway seven left. And we're going to go ahead and take care of our before takeoff procedures or checklist real quick. We need to arm the auto feather switch, which is right there. And propeller feathering has already been manually checked. Fuel quantity is good to go. We've already verified that. Flight director is already on. That's what this little pink triangle means right here. Uh, bleed air valves need to be open at this point. You may remember I opened them earlier, turned them back off not a big deal. Annunciator lights need to be extinguished or considered. So let's hop up here. There's none up top to consider. Uh, we do need to turn that rudder boost on. Rudder boost comes on there. Left and right pedo heat was supposed to be on. And the rest of the lights, the left, uh, left and right auto ignition and the left and right engine any ice are supposed to be on. So we're good there. Transponder needs to be checked. This guy right here, we are going to roll with code 1200, which is the VFR code here in the United States. Ice protection, just the engine anti-ice. Engine auto ignition is on, or as it says as required. We've got it on. PFD altitude and heading are normal. We're good to go on those. GPS position is good. Standby altitude indicator is erect and normal. There isn't one. That's something for the King Air 200. I did write this in here finally, flaps and landing lights, so flaps set for takeoff, landing lights need to come on, I had turned those taxi lights off, did all my lights turn off? I thought I had all my lights, I thought I had them all on, I guess I turned them off, I must have I must have clicked them off, maybe I hit the L key accidentally, that's alright, that'll happen sometimes. Uh, everything else is set for takeoff. We do want to go ahead and set our runway heading. We'll do that as soon as we get onto the runway. And we will get this bird in the air. So let's go ahead and pull out here on the runway. I have turned track IR off and I'm going to leave it off at this point. It's, uh, you know, in some of the larger aircraft it's fantastic. But for whatever reason in these small smaller aircraft, uh, it, it just for whatever reason doesn't work very well for me. So, um... There's a little edit there, a, a little glitch. I, I accident. I, I meant to. Uh, I meant to take the parking brake off by hitting the period key, and I ended the video. So if it sounds a little choppy right there, where I said small and then smaller, now you know why. Go ahead. Feel free to make fun of me down in the comments. I don't mind. So parking brake needs to come off, which it is at this point. And now we can go ahead and bring in a little throttle. We're going to do a rolling takeoff here. Everything is set and ready to go. So let's get this aircraft moving forward here. Remember, I don't want to bring those throttles up too high. There is a delay in how long it takes them to get started, uh, or how long it takes the engines to spin up, I guess is, is the right word. Uh, I believe there's a term for that, but uh, you know what? Don't hold me to it. If there is, I don't know what the term is. Um, but uh, I'm sure there probably is a term for that. There's a term for everything in aviation. 
So let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, I don't know why there's a little chop there. I'm getting good frame rates, but um, yeah, let's just get this bird in the air. And I think it's just uh, my computer's acting up a little today. So that'll happen sometimes. I apologize for that. Remember, we don't want to quite bring in full throttle because we don't want to over torque our engines. So let's get this baby rolling. We're going to rotate it about 110 knots to see if I can keep this thing near the middle of the runway here. Looking pretty good. There's 90 knots there. There's 100 and 110. Let's go ahead and rotate. All right. I should have set the runway heading. Would have made it much easier. But anyway, positive rate of climb gear can come up at this point. And uh, because we've got everything programmed into the FMS properly, yeah. I, I, I did change the departure runway in the FMS. So let's go ahead and uh, let's turn on the nav function. It should navigate via the FMS. Turn on the autopilot. It's going to make a turn and line up with this magenta line right here. And now we can go ahead and let's set our speed for a flight level uh, change here. And we're going to set our speed for... 180 knots. Now we hit the flight level change. It should lower the nose and speed up. Oh, it went directly to. Okay, let's try speeding it up now. We don't want it to dive though. We can go ahead and bring flaps up at this point. Remember, flight level change, basically what that does is it's going to do whatever it needs to to maintain speed. Maybe. It's going a little bonkers on me. I don't know why it's going down. You know what? Let's just go altitude and vertical speed mode. Where are you at? Vertical speed mode. There you go. And we don't want it down. We want it up. So let's climb it. Let's start out at uh, 2,000 feet per minute. A lot of power in this aircraft. And it's a little bit better there. Um, again, there, there are some things I'm not used to with this airplane. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop right into our after takeoff checklist here. Uh, landing gear is up, flaps are up, yaw damper, if it hasn't already been brought on, we need to bring that on. Yaw damper is now on, climb power needs to be set, so let's go ahead and bring those throttles back a little bit. And it's going to bring that torque down, that's what we want. We can bring those props back a little bit as well. Let's bring the props back. You can hear that change in the sound there. And you see, uh, you may be able to see it. This little, this is an arrow right here, and I'm trying to move it so it comes close. I want, I want these to line up. Is what I want. I believe that's the correct way to do it. Again, I don't actually have a checklist or a manual for this aircraft, so please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But basically, I'm just going to bring those so they're close to lining up. We're going to continue to climb out at 2,000 feet per minute here. We're going all the way up to flight level 230. We are tracking as intended via our FMS which is all set up and ready to go everything's looking good this flight is well underway so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop off of here as I always do to try and shorten things up because I already know this one's long so I'm gonna try and shorten it up a little hop off of here and I'll see you at top of descent now I know I said I'd see you at top of descent but I forgot we need to do the cruise checklist and I'm actually glad I forgot because I found something really cool on here check this out remember this is the Milviz uh, King Air 350i if you go down here on your yoke and you press this button look at that checklist items you got a checklist index here and then you use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down right so we want the normal checklist menu click on it look at that now I went through the before engine start just to check it out so let's scroll down we need to do our cruise checklist so let's scroll down here. There it is, cruise checklist. Bam, let's take a look. Cruise power needs to be set. So let's set the cruise power first. And uh, we're actually pretty close to where I want to be for cruise power anyway. So I'm not going to mess with it right now. So just click and it marks it green. Auto feather needs to come off. Let's move this out of the way. Oh, we'll need to hop down over here. So let's hop down over here real quick. Oh, I guess I should have left it out of the way, huh? <laughs> learning, folks, learning. Okay, uh, turn this off real quick. Hop down over here. Auto feather needs to come off at this point. Click it off. There we go. Auto feather is off, so we'll click that. ECS mode as required. I don't know what ECS mode is. Uh, let's take a look here real quick. Uh, that's just this bat bus. ISIS is on. External power. Not really sure what ECS mode is. If you know what ECS mode is, let me know. 
Uh, I don't know what it is, so the only thing I can really do right now is just check that as good to go. We do need to monitor uh, engine instruments and fuel gauges, so we'll click both of those. Checklist complete. If I right click, it takes me back to that main menu, so when we're ready to start our descent, we'll click on the descent checklist. And if I need to turn it off, let me hop back up to this view here. If I need to turn it off, all I do is click the button again, and off it goes. When I click it, there it is. Scroll for the, and it, check it out now. It's got the abnormal checklist menu as well, so let's click on that. Oh, that went, that went to normal, my bad. We gotta scroll down and then click. Abnormal checklist, we got air start, so if our engines cut out uh, mid-air, we've got an air start. No starter assist, uh, flaps up landing, one engine inoperative approach and landing. The whole shebang there. Emergency checklist, we can check those out. We got engine fire uh, or failure in flight, engine fire on the ground, emergency engine shutdown on the ground, and so on and so forth. So that's awesome. I didn't know that was there because I don't have a manual for the aircraft, but guess what? Now we know. We have our checklist available to us right here in the aircraft. And I'm really thrilled about that because now we can actually uh, start trying to follow the proper checklist for this aircraft. And uh, that's fantastic. So, <laughs> all right, enough about that. We've done our uh, cruise checklist at this point. So the only thing to do now is to leave you to it until we get to the top of descent. So I will see you guys when we get there. Okay, we're getting close to the top of descent here. Uh, so let's go ahead and take advantage of our newly found checklist feature here. Let's hop on down here. We want to use our normal checklist menu. Get back there. Click on that. Scroll on down. Obviously, we haven't done all these yet. That's okay. We're going to take care of our descent checklist. Pressurization needs to be set. I've gone over this several times. If you need me to go over it again, please feel free to let me know. You know what? We need to hop down here a little bit further. So we're going to be landing at about 4,300 feet. Uh, all the pressure, altitude, everything's already been taken care of. We just need to scroll this down. Basically, it's going to be about 5,000 feet is where we need to be on this. And if you need to know uh, how that works, if you haven't uh, had the explanation of that or seen the explanation of that in a couple of my other videos, let me know and I'll put it back in there in a future video. But I just skipped it on this one as far as uh, how to calculate the proper uh, altitude for that pressure setting. Okay, enough said. So that goes with cabin altitude as well. We're crossing GCN right now, so we need to start our descent very shortly. Rate control will be as desired. Altimeter will be set when we cross below uh, 18,000 feet. Uh, let's see. Cabin signs as required. Windshield anti-ice as required. Brake de-ice if installed. As required, as required. Fuel balance. Let's check our fuel balance real quick. It's pretty even. And cabin equipment positioned. I don't actually know what that means. Probably stuff we gotta maybe put in our uh, clipboards away and stuff like that. <laughs> Seats, uh, seat backs in the upright and locked position. Seat belts obviously will need to be on. And that is it for our descent checklist. So with that being said, let's go ahead and set our next altitude, which is going to be 8,200 feet. So let me turn, uh, let me turn checklist function off here real quick. And we're looking right here, 8,200 feet. And I'm going to do something here. I'm going to go ahead, let me slow down because I want to descend a little bit at a little bit slower speed. So I pull the throttles back while I'm adjusting this. We want to go to 8,200 feet. Let's get that started. Well, I bypassed it quick, didn't I? <laughs> All right, let's get it on down to 8,200 feet. And we're going to try using that flight level change mode again. There's 8,200. I want it to slow down a little bit more. Let's see if we can get this to work properly. If I hit flight level change right now, it should lock in at about 190. Let's try it. Yep, so locked into 191. Now I should be able to scroll this speed down to adjust how fast I want it to descend. And I want it to descend at 170, let's say. So it should hold until it gets to 170 and then it should start to descend. And then uh, once once it starts to descend I can always make adjustments and basically what the aircraft does is it changes its pitch to maintain 170 knots <coughs> excuse me that's how the flight level change works so the aircraft will continue to, to adjust its own pitch with the autopilot to maintain 170 knots that's why we're not descending yet you can see we're still pretty much uh, flying I mean, we're descending you know a few feet a minute or something like that but it's trying to slow down when it hits 170 
it'll start to nose over and it'll do everything it can to maintain 170 without making an adjustment to the engines because there's no auto throttle in this aircraft. All right, did I talk about that long enough? All right, enough said. We're going to be into our descent here shortly, and I will come back to you when we are on approach so that we can shorten up this video just a little bit. So I'll see you shortly, guys. All right, we're just about on our final approach here. You can see we're still descending, going down to 6,900. I'm actually tracking the VOR for page. Uh, and uh, le, 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 can't talk. I've tuned the VOR frequency into my NAV1 at 117.60, and I've uh, turned the course heading to 338, which is our final approach course. And you can see we're just a little left of that, and we're working our way over to it right now. If you haven't had an opportunity to see my... Uh, my VOR to VOR navigation tutorial. Please take an opportunity to look at that. It'll explain how we track a VOR like I'm doing right now. And all I'm doing is trying to hit my uh, specific altitudes. I'm actually a little high right now. So I'm slowing the aircraft down. I'm, I'm in close enough and slow enough that I can bring the landing gear down. So landing gear is coming down. down right now. Next setting of flaps is coming in. And let's take a real quick look at our landing checklist. Hopefully we've got enough time to do this here. Let's turn our heading over to uh, 338 here so we can get on course. There's 338. Normal checklist is what we want. We want our landing checklist. Let's see if we can get through this real quick. Uh, before landing first, approach speeds are confirmed. Auto feather is needs to be armed. Let's turn that off real quick. Hop down here. We're going to run out of time for this. Arm the auto feather. I'm going to use my paper checklist here because we need to go really quick on this. So let me just jump on over here. Uh, let's see, pressurization is done, cabin signs are good, auto feather needs to be armed, flaps need to go to approach, landing gear needs to go down, that's all been done, landing taxi lights are on, prop sync off, and that's how we go through a really fast checklist. And we're going to turn the autopilot off at this point because as you can see, we're a little high here and we're a little to the left. And that's, that's understandable because our, um, uh, hold on, I'm trying to think while I'm doing two things here. Our uh, VOR is on the left side of the airport, and that's why I, uh, we were lined up with the VOR. Well, it says we're not now, but anyway, you get the point. Uh, we're, we were trying to track in on the VOR. I guess we were a little left of it, so uh, let's see, where's our speed at? Our speed's looking pretty good. Uh, we need to come down a little bit quicker here. All in all, we're actually looking pretty good. I'm just uh, double checking my uh, checklist here. Yaw damper needs to come off once landing is assured. Pretty sure we're going to be able to land, so yaw damper off at this point. And uh, we need to go pull those throttles back a little more. Full flaps need to come in at this point. That's going to slow us down a great bit more. Prop levers need to come full forward. That's that sound right there. And that's it. We're set for landing. So. All I need to do is uh, actually land it without crashing. So let's go ahead and bring this bird on in here. Everything's looking pretty good. I've got control of my throttles right now. My speed is coming down, which is precisely what I want it to do. And we were a little high, obviously. So I'm going. I'm going to go ahead and let that nose keep coming down for a minute here until we're 1, uh, and we're pretty close actually. We're getting close to where we want to be. So we can start bringing in. Uh, I'm at 120 knots, which is maybe just a little faster than I want to be, but. We'll slow it down right before we uh, land. So I'm bringing in a little more throttle now. Remember, the throttle comes in slowly. There we go. And we're going to want to be descending at right around 700 feet per minute, which is going to be right in this area here. So, and we're doing pretty good. We can actually pull just a little bit of throttle back, tiny little bit, and we fly the approach. There's not much else to it than that. I've shown it many times. Those of you who've watched the... Uh, several episodes you know what it's all about so let's listen to our call outs and uh, if i think of anything worthwhile to say i'll talk otherwise i'll keep my mouth shut three hundred One hundred, fifty, forty, 
30. 20. Pull back a little hard there. 10. A oh, little hard on the landing. A little bit. Not too bad. Throwing those reverses. Uh, minus a 135. I, I've had worse landings, that's for sure. But uh, that wasn't too terribly bad. A little bumpy there. Not quite used to this aircraft yet. You guys already know that. Whoa. Boy, when you pull it out of that reverse mode, it kind of acts funky, doesn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this runway here. This is runway 25. We're going to make a left turn all the way around onto the taxiway here. Keep it nice and slow there. We don't want to make our turns too fast. All right, looking fantastic. It's not a very far taxi in, so I'll keep you guys with me for the moment. Let's go ahead and bring our flaps up as part of the after landing checklist. Landing lights can come off at this point. One and two, taxi lights need to stay on. Flaps are traveling up as we speak. And I, I know this is my, my King Air 200 checklist, but I'm just using it for a quick reference here. Many of the items are the same. Uh, let's see what else here. Oh, well, it helps if we stay on the taxiway, doesn't it? Boy, she's taxiing quick, too. Slow it down just a little bit. Yeah, that's about the gist of it. We just got a little ways to go up here. We'll hang a right and park this thing. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just hop off for a second. Once I get it parked, uh, we'll hop back on here and we'll do the shutdown checklist real quick. Okay, you can see we found a parking space, so let's go ahead and take care of our shutdown checklist. And just for the fun of it, let's see how well this checklist works. I was actually just talking to my friend uh, Dispatch about uh, the King Air 350, uh, the Milvis version here. He is a King Air 350 pilot in the real world. Shout out to him again. That's the second time in this video. Um, he told me these checklists aren't quite complete. So that's all right, though. We're going to go ahead and give it a shot anyway and just see what we got here. So there's our cruise descent before landing, normal landing, steep approach, max reverse thrust, bulk landing, after landing. Shutdown and scaring, that's what we're looking for. Park and brake is set at this point. Avionics master switch is supposed to go off. Let's find out if, uh, let's turn that off and see if it turns this off. Nope, leaves our checklist on. That's fantastic. So we're good to go there. So let's see. Ah, oh, but it doesn't let us use it anymore. Oh, let's, so let's turn it back on. Go ahead and call it good for now. IFIS power need, ISIS power needs to be off. That's this one down over here. It turns this thing here off. All right, so ISIS power goes off at this point. Auto feather needs to be off. Let's hop down over there and turn off the auto feather real quick. That's this guy. Turn off. There we go. All right, auto feather's off. Exterior lights need to go off. All of them except for, you guessed it, the rotating beacon. Those are all off at this point. ECS mode needs to be off. Not 100% certain what that is. So I'm going to bypass it for the moment. Uh, cockpit and cabin blower needs to be auto. It should be there anyway. Uh, no, it's off for some reason. Not really sure why that... I didn't turn it off. That's all right. It's auto now, so we're good on that. Oxygen, oxygen controls need to be pushed off. Not sure where those are. We've talked about that many times. Maybe dispatch will give us a heads up on that battery i'm sure it's charged it is a sim after all interior master switch off where's the interior master switch i believe it's one of these over here uh probably this one is the master switch uh let's go ahead and let's turn that off and break the ice don't need it it says on then off i'm not going to mess with it right now itt is stabilized Instrument emergency lights are on. We left those on. Condition levers need to go to fuel cutoff at this point. That's these guys right here. There's one. There's two. Oh, that quiets everything down, doesn't it? Prop levers need to be feathered. Let's go ahead and feather those. Prop levers are feathered. You are actually supposed to do that as you shut down the engines, if I remember correctly. Overhead panel switches are all off. We never turned any on except for that uh, emergency light switch. And cabin entry lights as required. Battery and generator switches off. What does it say? Below 151. I'm assuming that's maybe the ITT is below 151. Either way, let's go ahead and shut those off. That's uh, battery and generator switches. Battery off. And there's nothing else to do at this point because the aircraft is now shut down and we can't use our checklist once she's shut down. All right. Lots of talky talk. There's our beautiful airplane again. I know that view bounces out really fast, but uh, I just like to take another quick look at it because it's a beautiful aircraft. Let's hop on over to ACARS, shut that down real quick, and we will wrap this flight up on the website and be done for the day.
Here we are in our eight cars, ready to do a closeout. As you can see, you remember I mentioned that flight phase changes. It now shows that we've arrived. Maybe one of these videos I'll show you some of the other changes in there. Hour and 12 minutes was the duration that we were scheduled for. We're at an hour and six minutes. Hey, we actually made it on time. That's got to be a first for us, doesn't it? All our other flight information is in there. Our connection to the Internet is okay. That's a big one there. I've had some Internet issues today. So we want to make sure that's okay before we try to file the PIREP. So the first thing we need to do is end the flight by clicking the End Flight button. It says it's not parked at a gate. It actually is. We saw that. That's just because with the add-on scenery isn't linking up. And I believe there's a way to do that. And I'm going to take a look at that here, and then I'll show that to you when I figure it out. But we'll go ahead and acknowledge that for now, and then it goes to the phase of pre-flight, and that means it's ready for us to get set for our next flight. If we don't have a good internet connection, we click File PyRep, we're going to run into an issue because it's going to freeze up on us. So make sure you have that good internet connection. Click File PyRep. It was filed. Acknowledge that. And we're done. That's it. ACARS is complete. Let's go ahead and close this out. And we'll hop on over on the website and see where we stand. Here we are on the website, and we're taking a look at our profile here. That's us, Captain Mac, and as you can see, look at that. Only two hours to go. Oh, we're so close. So very close. Our last flight was Phoenix to Page. Let's take a quick look. There's our PIREP auto-approved. Everything's good to go. We made uh, $824 in revenue, so we had a 65.88% uh, profit margin. That's always fantastic. A little rough on the landing, 135 or minus 135, but other than that, everything's good to go. We did have one warning here. Uh, we can click on our flight log and take a look and see what that warning was. Let's see what it was here. It just says warnings one, but I don't actually see it listed in there. Usually the warnings are, oh, here we go. Landing lights off below 10,000. Okay. Why is that a warning? That's, they're supposed, oh, they're supposed to be on below 10,000. My brain's not working. <laughs> okay, so it says we had our landing lights off below 10,000 feet. Um, that's kind of weird because we had them on. You guys remember we turned them on before we took off. Um, maybe I turned them off too soon or something. That'll happen sometimes. No big deal, though. It obviously wasn't a reason to reject the pilot report, so we're good to go on that. So let's hop back over here. And there we are, folks. So two hours to go, really one hour and 56 minutes to go. So our next flight is going to really put us very close. Our next flight is going to put us within an hour. So... Um, we're going to be rocking and rolling, ready to ready for that promotion. And I'm pretty excited about it, and I, and I hope you guys are too, because I'm definitely looking forward to that promotion and getting into some different aircraft. But this was a good flight. Uh, we learned some things about that King Air, and that was fantastic. And we'll probably fly it on the way back, uh, just, just for the fun of it. But uh, all in all, I'm very excited and really looking forward to getting those last couple of hours knocked out. Uh, I've enjoyed the journey up to this point with you guys, and I hope you have too. If you enjoy the videos, please give a thumbs up or a like down below. Leave any questions or concerns down in the comments section. Feel free to let me know if I've made any mistakes. I don't mind that. I'm sure there will be plenty of folks doing that. Um, not a big deal, though. I'm, I'm, I'm always open to learning. So anyway, I'm going to stop running my mouth here because this is two and a half minutes of a closeout. Please subscribe to my channel. I always appreciate that. I want to get a shout out to my latest subscribers. As always, I do not uh, say their names on here, but... I'm really excited. We're up to 36 subscribers now, and I really just want to see that number keep on climbing. So please uh, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. If you don't have a Google account, it'll ask you to register for one. That's fine. Subscribe to the channel, and then you don't ever have to uh, go to that Google account again if you don't want to. I always appreciate it. So until next time, folks, keep the blue side up unless you're crossing the Pacific, at which point you're on your own. Thank you.